Today, I have the pleasure of introducing you to Self Heal, perhaps one of the most underrated herbs. Self Heal has been the subject of dozens of studies looking at its skin healing benefits, its liver toning constituents, and there's been quite a bit of research around its usefulness for conditions like viral infections, autoimmune disorders, and even cancer. So today we're going to look at how to identify Self Heal. We'll look at the research surrounding Self Heal. And of course, I'll share my own anecdotal evidence for the benefits of this herb and how I like to use it here at home. And as always, please remember to like this video if you enjoy this content. Let's get started. Self Heal or Prunella vulgaris has documented use as far back as 25 AD. In Shenong's classic of the Materia Medica in the Eastern Han Dynasty, the herb is described as bitter, acrid, and cold. Self-heal appears again in the 16th century in De Historia Sturbium Commentari in Signes, written and illustrated by Leonhard Fuchs, published in 1542. Self-heal is a member of the mint family Lemiaceae, and like most members of the mint family, it thrives as a creeping ground cover spreading through rhizomatous growth. Self-heal does well in part shade to full sun, though I've seen it occurring naturally more often in well-watered and shaded areas of lawns and on the edges of fields and paths. It's a perennial with ovate to lanceolate shaped leaves with generally smooth margins, though some leaves may have dentate edges, especially near the base of the leaf. The leaves grow opposite of each other in pairs, alternating in direction up the stem to maximize the capture of sunlight. Because of its low creeping growth habit and purple flowers, self heal is often confused with creeping Charlie. However, closer inspection will show that these two plants could really not look more different. The leaves of creeping Charlie have scalloped edges and purple flowers that bloom from the nodes at each leaf, while self heal has smooth oval leaves and a single flower bract that appears at the top of each stem. The flowers of Self Heal are wonderfully unique and beautiful. When looking closely, you'll notice that the flowering bract houses a cluster of delicate purple flowers. The calyx or green parts of the bract that protects the flowers is sometimes tinged with a burgundy red and is often covered in hundreds of tiny hairs. Like most members of the mint family, the stem of this plant is distinctly square. Self heal is not as aggressive a ground cover as its cousins, spearmint or lemon balm, but if nurtured, it can grow lush and dense. This here is a patch of self heal in my own garden that I started from about a dozen transplants and I find that it responds really well to a nice stinging nettle fertilizer. John Parkinson, an herbalist for English nobility in the 16th century, used self heal topically as a styptic to stop the flow of blood and fresh wounds. Modern day herbalist Julie Breton Seal makes an ointment with self heal infused olive oil and beeswax to apply to minor injuries. For the tissues within the mouth and throat, self heal is widely used as a gargle to remedy conditions like swollen glands, tonsillitis, laryngitis, and in general to promote healing after dental work. The main active constituents in self heal are triterpenoids, sterols, flavonoids, and volatile oils, which are known collectively to provide anti inflammatory, antibacterial, antiviral, and anti tumor effects. Triterpenoids in particular are known to benefit the liver, while consuming plant sterols as a part of one's regular diet provides benefits to those who struggle with high cholesterol. 
The reason behind this is that sterols behave similar to cholesterol on a chemical level, but are harder for the body to absorb, effectively decreasing blood levels of cholesterol. And finally, volatile oils provide potent antifungal properties, making them useful topically. Self-Heal has shown potential in fighting a wide range of bacteria. Various studies done between 2004 and 2015 found that it can inhibit bacteria like E. coli, Staphylococcus aureus, Propionii bacterium acnes, and various bacterial infections associated with women's health, with water extracts being the most effective. I found this quite encouraging as many plant studies involve separating constituents in a way that can only be done in a laboratory setting, while a water-based extract can be easily done at home. Researchers have found that an extract from the plant can help kill certain cancer cells in lab tests. For instance, one study showed that a self-heal extract could make certain types of blood cancer cells self-destruct by changing the levels of certain proteins within the cells. Another study concluded that self-heal extracts could help prevent lung cancer by making cancer cells die and by stopping them from dividing. Even a water-based extract was found to stop liver cancer cells from spreading by weakening certain substances that help them move. But self-heal is not only great for liver cancer cells, but for the liver as a whole. Studies have found that self-heal can protect against acute liver injury by reducing liver enzyme levels and alleviating liver cell damage. It also improves liver function in cases of alcohol-induced injury through its antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. According to the studies, self-heal can even alleviate autoimmune hepatitis and liver failure by modulating inflammatory responses and signaling pathways. All of these examples further validifying the use of self-heal in traditional Chinese medicine as a potent liver tonic. In a 1989 study, researchers found that an extract from Prunella vulgaris could strongly inhibit HIV in lab tests, though at the time, how it did so wasn't clear. Later in 1992, researchers discovered that self-heal could stop HIV-1 from replicating by preventing the virus from attaching to cells. Another study showed that a substance from self-heal named PPS-2B had strong anti-herpes effects by inactivating the virus and blocking its entry into healthy cells. This action of blocking entry into cells was also observed for other viruses as well, including viruses similar to C19, Ebola, and Zika. So what I have here are three bottles of tinctures. Uh, I've tried different formulations. So the very first formulation that I made, uh, this is my antiviral tincture that has lemon balm. Lemon balm is another powerful antiviral. Self-heal, sage, and thyme. And so this is something that my husband and I would take especially um, during the holiday season. So my husband works in the educational setting and um, when the students go home for Thanksgiving break and then they come back to the campus um, almost every year after that period of two weeks, my husband comes down with a serious illness and then I also get it. Um, so I like to add this to our teas um, or even sometimes just take it directly couple droppers is more than enough. That's about um, one to two teaspoons. One of my husband's complaints, especially when he was in the midst of an illness, he found the tincture very harsh. So I made another formulation that is lemon balm, self-heal, rose petals. Rose petals are another uh, powerful antiviral. It's also great for headaches, apparently. And then sage and mint. So I added the mint, hoping that the cooling qualities of mint would make this tincture uh, a bit more tolerable, but I found that it's still quite harsh. This is a 100 proof alcohol, and of course that's gonna be pretty harsh on the throat. So we tried mixing recently this tincture with glycerin. Glycerin is a sugar alcohol. It does not have the same properties as your ethyl alcohols. Um, it's syrupy, it's a sweet syrupy substance, and it's often used to um, sweeten medicines. You can also use it to make certain infusions. And so what I did is I just took that tincture and then I cut it, um, I wanna say this is about two thirds tincture and one third of that glycerin. 
And so this is gonna make your medicines a whole lot more palatable. So I use these tinctures for a number of viral infections, um, canker sores. Uh, if you are already dealing with a weak immune system and you start to develop canker sores, it's very likely that you'll have a, a more severe breakout. When my husband starts to uh, experience the onset of that, he would take this antiviral tincture with the glycerin it's really helped with the severity of those types of viral breakouts. So that's just some of the research surrounding self-heal. And of course, I encourage you to do your own research because there is so much information out there. Until next time, folks.